Uh, Nicholas, great to meet you. Um, uh, one of the things that came very clear about your, your talk there was how passionate you are about startups and entrepreneurialism. Um, in terms of the the way, the shape of the world, I mean, uh, it was also clear that you know you don't you see you, well, you, well you would acknowledge Silicon Valley as the the central ecosystem or having one of the most envied ecosystems. It isn't everything uh, in the world, and you you proved that with Skype. I mean, Skype is probably one of the stellar uh, acquisitions that Microsoft bought it last year. Uh, in terms of um, the global stage for startups. Uh, a few years ago, you said to me, "You don't think uh, Silicon Valley is forever." So, uh, where, where do you see see the world now in terms of startup opportunities and technology? Yeah. Well, I don't know if I said it was forever, but what I think we've been saying and we continue to say today is that for every day that that goes, there's you know there's higher likelihood that great companies are being born in other places than Silicon Valley. I think that's what I'm saying, and that we could continue to see that. We see there are a lot of growth in in markets like. You know, obviously, like you know, the, the emerging market, like you know, Brazil, Turkey, Russia, but also, you know, we're here in Dublin today, and and in Europe, there's a great, you know, the, the ecosystem here is really being is growing, and we see a lot of very very successful companies coming out of Europe in a faster speed than ever, and that's happening because there's an ecosystem now that's being built up, and also in terms of where where you know the large market for consumer companies, which you know, essentially we're talking about. You know, the growth there is you know is is in is in Latin America, you know, in in Asia, in and also in actually in, in uh, places like 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 Russia as well. So those are markets become more and more important. I, I spoke to some fascinating companies that weren't just in Ireland this morning. I talked to people from Russia, and I'm amazed. And one of the points you made on stage was uh, just you know you could be a big company in Sweden, but you won't be a big company in you know the world. And same in Ireland. In terms of um, the attitude, I mean, you guys, so you when you started up, you mean you, I actually was really touched by it when you said that you worked for an entrepreneur. When the dot com boom came and went, you thought. You know, oh, um, I missed my chance. Uh, we're at a really frenetic time. Some say it's almost like 1999 again. What What do you think is uh, you know are the opportunities like? What do you think the Do you think the tech market will hold up? Do you think there's any any dangers on the horizon? I mean, the internet is all pervasive now. Everyone uses it, but there's a lot of there's a lot of buoyant ad attitude as well. Well, you know, you need to separate the underlying growth in 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 in, in the market in demand. And if you look at you know how much of the world economy is moving online and that is continually continuously growing and more and more people are online and 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 businesses conducted online people's lives are online and that's for real now so then you need to separate that from sometimes when there are investors who maybe are paying you know too high prices for some companies and 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 those are two separate things so so you know there's been a lot of demand from you know particularly from retail investors to have access to these growth companies that's when you've seen some some of these IPOs over the last years there's been a lot of demand so prices been driven up and maybe to some you know prices that at least in the short term have been you know too high um, as a, you're now an investor uh, you've been the whole journey you've done the whole startup you work for entrepreneurs you've done your own company uh, now you're an investor uh, there's a term you hear a lot nowadays about the post PC world, and uh, you know everyone's going mad about the new iPad or the new whatever. Um, what do you see as compelling areas of opportunity now? I mean, uh, you know, do you, you you're, as you invest in companies, what what are the the technologies and opportunities that you see that excite you the most right now? Well, I think this is very important that the, you, the, the platforms are evolving, and you know we had. You know, I remember when when the Mosaic, the web browser, you know, came out. It was a you know, it was a revolutionary. You could not, you can do images on 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 the internet, and it was like amazing. And that opened up a whole new opportunity w with the web. And um, now, of course, now in the last few years, we had the whole smartphones and and and, and tablets and everything. So those things are, of course, you know, very important. And but we don't talk about companies doing mobile or or or, or the web. You know, people, companies today are doing things. You know. For consumers, I think that's what it's about. It's not about which way you reach the people. It's about doing something for people. I think so. That over the next several years, I think it's all about you know how do you provide the best you know experience and non-intrusive experience maybe also for for people because there's sometimes people just get too much you know immersed in 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 all these services and and I think it's about simplifying things and and and, and, and providing services on the end users kind of um, terms and not on the technology terms. Um, a lot of companies are. I mean, I, I'm, I'm just amazed a lot of the energy in startups we're seeing, and all kinds of people. A lot of ideas. Some people have me too ideas. Some people have really crazy ideas. But you say that will never work, and it may just work. You know. Uh, in terms of uh, in Europe, uh, we're in a post 
boom, post banking boom as well. I mean, there's no money around, particularly in Ireland, where it's hard to get for businesses to get loans. What kind of uh, you know inspiration could you impart for a startup today who's you know maybe in Ireland, maybe in Sweden, maybe in Finland, maybe somewhere that isn't in you know it isn't New York or isn't Silicon Valley, to get on the road today from the things you're seeing in terms of scarcity of funds, I mean, there's also talk about, say, venture capitalists are sitting on their funds, for example, in that case. Uh, what, would you, what would be your advice to somebody who maybe Nicholas Zenstrom 11 years ago? Yeah, well, I think that the good news today is that it takes less money to start a company. And, and, and if, you're, you know, if you're lucky enough that and you were influenced to take you know, engineering and, and learn to code in school, you're even better off because then you can get together with some of your friends and you can develop you know, proof of concept, a prototype without any funding and you try it out and, and it's, does it work? And you actually don't need so much money at all to, to get started. Ten years ago you actually needed money but you needed to have servers and whatever. Today, if you don't learn how to code, you can start something on the spare time, you know, the weekends and the evenings and then you get something, you know, something that you, know, you, can, uh, and it, you can iterate it. And, and so that's the way to, to, to bootstrap you know, companies. And then you can you know, go out and raise money. You know, the, you know, when, when I started you know, both Casa and, and Skype, I could not raise money. You know, Casa was unfundable and uh, Skype was unfundable as well. For the, you know, it took one year to raise the first round of money. So I used all my savings and I persuaded some of my very, very good friends who have you know, been successful in banking to put some money in. So, you know, there is ways around it. You know, I, don't, I think it's not about going to like you know to an institutional investor at the first thing you do. I, I find I, I remember I, I still look, I still use Skype and I look. I mean, I, of course I use Skype, but I look at Skype and I, I kind of see it. I see it as a, a disruptive technology. Do you think uh, you know there are many opportunities for people to disrupt what's coming? I mean, uh, Twitter is use of software. Facebook is social media. Uh, everyone's talking about those things, but in terms of something that completely changes the picture, I mean, what I found found particularly disruptive was Skype. Was God, I can, I can ring people for, yeah. for very cheaply, and, and now I can do video and all those things. Yeah. I think you know, with, with Skype, we, we, we kind of unli uh, liberated people because people wanted to speak to each other. And, and I remember just paying a lot of money for phone calls. It was horrible. It's like I should be able to speak to my friends. And that was almost a low-hanging fruit. I think what you see now is also disruptive companies which brings just pure efficiencies to a market. One very good example is Halo, you know, the taxi uh, um, app that you know, enables uh, smartphone users to hail a taxi they just launched here in Dublin some time ago. And that is disruptive because it's a completely whole way to, to get a taxi, but it it's, it's adds efficiency to the market. So it's good for the consumer, it's good for the cabby driver. And that's what's interesting where you have additional value being created. I'm noticing that there's there's a, a, an effort here because social is virtual, for example, mobile is virtual. If you think about all switches, uh, there's an effort to bring all this to the physical world, really, using your smartphone. I mean, how how exciting is the smartphone opportunity? No, well, it's 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 not. You, know, it's just, you own the smartphones, but what's what's very very important is not the technology, it's the it's user behavior. Because with your smartphone, you have it in your pocket all the time, and when it runs out of battery midday, you go crazy and you go like a you know junkie, you know, look for electricity. But because you're always potentially online, so that means that, for example, when you're in a retail store, you go out, you try on a pair of shoes, and you, you, you flip through a book, and you take out your smartphone and you buy it online. And this is very disruptive for retailers because all of a sudden they really have to rethink their strategy. And of course, if you're in a retailer, you can think about this. This is disaster. Have all these, you know, retail outlets, and we're going to go bankrupt. But you can also rethink it. Say, well, actually, if I'm very, you know, if I'm forward-thinking and develop a multi-channel strategy, I can outcompete my competitors. So, so I think this this whole cross section where between the online world and the physical world is just, you know, it's completely happening now, and that's something I think we're going to see more and more of. Uh, just returning to Atomico, I mean, uh, you you have become what you probably either uh, worked hard to attract or despised years ago. You know, venture capitalist. Okay, let's say what as it, uh, as a venture capitalist. I mean, how 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 do you say how would you say Atomico is different from the guys you deal with? Because as you said, you would have your own wounds and uh, scars from dealing with venture capitalists. <laughs> well, I think that first of all, we we don't know if we want to call ourselves a venture capital firm or not, but. I, mean, I guess we are. I mean, we're investing in entrepreneurs and helping them to realize their potential. I think one big difference for us is that you know, a big part of our teams are you know are entrepreneurs, so we know how to build companies. But and we you know, so that's I think that's one thing. But the other thing which I think is different is that we are you know a global firm. We're not just local. 
and we're trying to help companies with international expansion and, and, and to grow their businesses. I think that's that's maybe a big big difference. Um, a, an interesting question really would be: uh, ten years ago we had IPO frenzy. Uh, now we're in a situation where. Facebook IPO'd. It didn't quite go as well as everybody thought it would. Uh, do you think? Do you think the IPO thing is not ready yet, or do you think it's 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 just really down to every individual company, really? Yeah. Well, what what what, what you've seen over the last you know ten years is that com companies have you know are preferring to stay private much longer than before, and they do that because it's a challenge to be in the stock market because all of a sudden you have investors who want who are looking for short term, you know. Um, uh, gains and short-term progression, but if you're an entrepreneur, you think this is a long-term thing. I'm going to build this for, you know, for for not for 10 years, but for 20 years. That's my vision. So I I don't want to be bothered about short-term thinking. The problem is the stock market is trained to think quarter by quarter. So that's why a lot of entrepreneurs, if they can, you know, they, they try to, to keep the company, you know, private for a longer time. And what happens then is that once a company is coming out of the market, there's a lot of demand for, for, for buying into that company and that's why you've had maybe some, some stocks gone up you know t too much in, in price but but for sure we see that now the companies you know one year ago a lot of companies yeah we want to go IPO and all of a sudden like we're gonna hold on a little bit and maybe we don't need to, to do that so and the other thing I think you know the, the thing to realize also an IPO is not the end game it's, it's a beginning of the next chapter for a company so it's about you, you need to do an IPO when you're ready for it.